Okay. Hi, I'm Gabriela Martinez. I'm Director of Education at the Museum of Latin American Art. And on behalf of the entire staff here at MOLA in Long Beach, California, I'd like to welcome you to MOLA's 2020 Dia de los Muertos program. Today's program and the entire event would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors. Here's a brief welcome from our presenting sponsor, Hyundai. Welcome to the 2020 Day of the Dead virtual celebration presented by Hyundai. We are thrilled to be a sponsor for this great event. We hope that you enjoy the beautiful traditions that make this annual celebration so special. Have a great day. Additional support was provided by the Kenneth T. and Eileen L. Norris Foundation, Bess J. Hodges Foundation, Arts Council for Long Beach, Robert Gumbiner Foundation, and the City of Long Beach. And today I'm really excited because we are joined by a local artist and a, a good friend, colleague, um, and also we were students together at Cal State Long Beach at one point, uh, Maria Guadalupe. So as a woman born in Mexico and raised in the United States, Maria Guadalupe's work navigates multiple spaces, including migration, pilgrimage, gender roles and gender markers, the boundaries of class, as well as the in-between space created as a result of her hybrid culture. Through sculpture and print, she celebrates and critically engages the expectations of gender, culture, and identity. And I wanna thank you all for joining us here today and I hope you'll enjoy the program. So Maria and I will kind of be going back and forth and um, she'll be teaching you how to make a retablo with a milagro on the inside. Um, and I, Maria, you wanted me to kind of talk a little bit about sort of the, how like the idea of the milagro fits into the, the tradition of Dia de los Muertos? Um, yes, the, uh, let's go over the materials first okay. so that while um, if somebody needs to run off, they could just listen to you talk to talk about it for a bit while um, they gather themselves, their, they gather their materials. Okay, so first and foremost, we need to make sure we have uh, heavy duty foil. In a pinch, if you don't have it, if you just have regular foil, just be very careful. It's just gonna be really easy to pierce it, but we can still make it work. Okay, um, heavy duty foil, a box, we tested something no bigger than eight and a half by 11, and that has to do with the printouts that were sent to you. Um, and so it can be anything, it could be a lid, it could be a box. This is what I made. Um, I just happened to have a box that was already blue, but this is why we have paint or construction paper so you can um, cover your, your box. And then um, I requested a dull pencil or a paintbrush. I prefer to use the paintbrush. We're not gonna use actual front part of the paintbrush. We're gonna be using the back and um, so that we can use it to like as a drawing tool, but um, the dull side. Okay, so make sure we have glue, scissors, uh, pencil, and um, either colored pencils or crayons or markers. And then also Sharpies um, or any, doesn't have to be Sharpie brand, uh, black or black and red um, permanent markers would be great. And then lastly, for optional stuff, we have tissue paper or a flower that we'll get to um, at the end. So I think that is it. If you don't, I'll say no, if you don't have a box, you could always just use things coming out of cardboard and I can or some sort of um, board and I can show you how to make it work on that too. Um, oh, last thing, sorry, one thing, we need um, just regular paper for uh, regular printer paper, construction paper, any color works. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. Yeah, so if anyone needs to kind of run out or run into another room to uh, pick up some supplies there in your house, we did try to make it so that you could use everyday materials that you probably have at home. And if you're not able to participate fully today because maybe um, you don't have enough time or you don't have all the materials that you need, this workshop will be archived on the MOLA YouTube page. So you can always return to it and revisit it. And maybe if you don't have time to finish today, you can always follow along with Maria later. Um, so just a little bit about Dia de los Muertos and why these religious images, uh, images or symbols come into play. So. If you're familiar with the history of Dia de los Muertos, you'll know that it is based on a, a combination, right, or a synthesis of both indigenous and um, European traditions and ideas and um, spiritual practices as well. So 
the way that these Catholic religious images come into play is that because Dia de los Muertos was blended with um, specific indigenous traditions, but also with the Catholic All Saints and All Souls Day, uh, you'll see a mixture of the different symbols as well. And one of the religious symbols um, that appears often is that of the Milagro. And I don't know, Maria, if you wanna talk a little bit about um, how Milagros function. Well, milagros are, in a sense, a bit of an offering, or um, it could be an offering typically to saints. Um, and it's an offering either as a thank you for a petition that was granted or is a request for a petition. So we are requesting a miracle milagro. Um, and so th that's where these come from. And typically they have milagros range from um, sacred Hearts, which you see here, we have options on Sacred Hearts, um, Sagrado, Cora and Sagrado Corazon, or uh, sometimes you'll see praying hands, um, other times you'll see you no know, eyes, and it's just reflective of whatever the petition is. It could be a fish representing food, it could, you know, it just, it's, um, it's a series of whatever is being requested is what, so you choose an image that represents that. That's lovely, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to be making our own milagro. And it, you know, in essence, it doesn't have to be, this is how I would like you to make it what you want. It doesn't have to be a petition. It could just be, um, you know, 2020 has been a, a difficult year to say the least. And so we could just take a moment of reflection to, to be grateful for what we do have, or to say like, you know, this is, um, I, I hope for this for the following year. Anything that you want to think of, um, make it your own. It doesn't have to, again, uh, revolve around religious iconography. But if you would like, that also is, is this is yours. Um, the retablo is typically like it's, uh, it's based on actual also um, the way uh, Christianity shows, um, re you know, religion, uh, religious icons are uh, typically Jesus or um, one of the saints are inside a box like, usually wood, and then it's decorated. But the um, the nicho, the small, it's more of an unas nicho retablo, is a smaller version of that. And it has an image centered in the middle and then decorative images around it. But you could also make this into a, an altar, a mini altar that you can place anywhere and then have maybe images of somebody you're dedicating it to. So maybe your milagro would be somewhat, um, something dedicated to that person or that you know, those people that you're going to have um, uh, in your altar. So again, the possibilities for what you want to go with is are, are wide and it's really just up to you in your, whatever you want to, wherever direction you want to take it. And the altar de ofrenda, right? It's a central aspect to the de los Muertos. It's a place where we all gather. It's a place where you set out your ofrendas or offerings to the ancestor who's coming to visit, who is believed to cross over from the afterlife to earth for that short period of time during Dia de los Muertos. Um, and so I guess with the milagro that you're drawing today, could you maybe use some symbols that represent some of the things that we would want to dedicate or, or offer up to, to the ancestor or the yes. honored person? Yes, it could be any um, thing again, representing uh, or I mean, something that we'd be offering to them, but it also could be something that represents them. Because a lot of um, times in the Dia de los Muertos, I mean, for uh, altars of the Dia de los Muertos, your ofrendas are things that that person enjoyed in their life. And so, um, you know, think about if you're going to make it to dedicate it, you want to make it an altar um, and you want to dedicate it to a certain person. What did they like to do when they were here? What are the things they enjoyed? What kind of food did they like? Or, um, you know, uh, like I said, it, or if you wanted to make it about a miracle or a request or just being grateful and it's just really thinking about which direction you want to go and then thinking about what images come to mind with about those things. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, here is a piece of foil. Now, foil has a really shiny side. I mean, they're both shiny. So one is more shinier than the other. The dull side, the dull side, that's the actual side we're going to be drawing on. And, um, but you know, this is a little tricky because we're going to draw on the, on the dull side, but the actual milagro is going to be on the shiny side. And that is because um, uh, typically milagros are made out of tin and it's hammered tin. And so you do, um, 
so they do it from the back and reverse it and they uh, hammer it from the back. So when you turn it over, whatever is that you're drawing, is, it raises a, um, sorry, it raises a little bit, how it causes a bit of what it's called relief. In this case, we're going to do it um, the same way, same practice, but we're gonna do it with either your dull pencil or your, the back of your brush. So we're gonna start by putting your hand, um, you're gonna put your brush in, the, in your dominant hand or your um, pencil, and then you're just gonna trace your hand. And how far apart or how close you want it is really up to you. Just leave a little space so that you can trace your hand. And we're gonna start going around here. Now you do wanna apply some pressure because you wanna make it um, so that it's a dozen indentation on the other side. But just reminder, if you're not using heavy duty foil, or if you are using something with a point, it, is, it will come sure through. So just be careful with that. But see, this is my hand, and as you can see it here, it's now if you turn it over just to see it, you'll see that you actually have a bit of a relief. It's raised a little from the other side. Um, but again, just make sure you keep it shiny side down because the entire process of the drawing part we're going to do in this way. Okay. Maria, would you mind um, maybe holding the foil a little closer to the camera so that we can see it with ah, the reflection? Okay. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to okay. see, but just to here? give them a little peek. Um, sorry, uh, here, this one. Okay, apologies. Yeah. There's a couple of cameras and I was trying to figure out which one. Um, okay, can you see it there? This is the tiny side. Can you see it? Because I can't, um, the way the sun is hitting me right now. And then this is the dull side. And so again, I'm drawing on the dull side. Can you see it? On the, your end or not too much? We can see it on the smaller image. Um, okay. the, the... So I'm trying to get close as possible. Nope. Okay. Does that help? I think the, so, oh, yeah. There it is. Okay. Thank All you. right. That problem takes you forever to move. Okay. So um, again, make sure. So re reiterate, make sure that you are doing it shiny side down. And I'm going to start by drawing in the palm. And here I did, um, I do really enjoy the, the image of the secret heart. Um, it is on everything that, on a lot of things that I have. And these are different options. I actually wore this in case any of you wanted to borrow one of these to, to um, do your sacred heart in the middle. Doesn't have to be a sacred heart. You can do again just an image of something that um, represents the person or you, anything that you are um, offering or requesting or being grateful for. But I'm going to stick to the, the image of the Sacred Heart. And so I'm going to start here only because this is the biggest, um, uh, biggest area. And so that gives me the most part to work with. And then I'll go into smaller details in there. Gabriela, yes. do you have, do you have any, um, I mean, if you were doing this with me right now, what would you, what, what kind of images do you think you would What put kind in of there? symbols would I put in there? Mm -hmm. Am I representing myself or am I representing somebody else? It's yours, so you, you tell me. I would probably put maybe a map of the world because I really miss traveling a lot and I'd like to get out there and explore a little bit more. And also because it reflects um, my family's background, my mom being from South America and my father being from Mexico and me living in the United States, I kind of feel like the entire span of the Americas is a little more representative of my identity. And so I like using maps and oh. maybe I'd put in a cat because I love cats. A specific type of cat? Um, no, I have two little street cats that were found, one in LA and one in Long Beach. So just any cat. What else would I put in there? I don't know. It's a good question. Tell me about the symbols you're putting on there. Well, I'm started again. I started with the sacred, the idea of the sacred heart, but then I add just decorative. So a lot of the sacred heart, you see, you'll see the flame in that has to um, see here. Mm. Burning flame, or they'll have the, the, if you can see here, it's the, um, the thorn, the crown of thorns again with uh, religious iconography. So I like to take ideas from that because um, I'm not basing it entirely on um, the representation of religion in this. I, I'm thinking it more of like, I grew up in the Catholic church and so it is rooted in, the, um, in my upbringing. And so to me, this is just um, 
it is a matter of it represents love to me and so that's why i'm choosing to go with it and like the the the, the flame is might sound a little um to me it's just to keeping that alive i guess and so i'm sticking with that for here um but then around it um like you i also miss traveling but i also um on top of, i love seeing the world but i also love eating in the world so all over the world. And so for me, I'm going to be adding some, you know, something to represent food because I miss it. And um, eyes because I miss seeing everything, you know, being out. And also I'm going to be adding a mouth because I'm quite the uh, social butterfly. And I really just miss conversating with meeting people from all over the world. Um, yeah, so you and I have a lot in common with the, with. And I'm sorry, I did. Speaking of like talking and all of that, I think thinking about my own artwork, um, probably a symbol that I often use as well um, that can be rooted. And to me, um, I was not raised Catholic. And so a lot of this imagery is really tied more to uh, representations of culture for me. Um, the, ca the Catholic imagery is something that I learned about a little more in creating my own artwork and working with other Latinx artists as well. And so I've kind of like adopted it in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but if I think about symbols that I use, I think I use a lot of like clouds with hands emerging, you know, as like help from heaven. So that must be something that I at some point saw in some kind of like, I don't know, ancient artwork. Um, and then I also like the, the codices with the, uh, yeah, the codices, right? The language, little clouds that come out of the people's mouths when you see in the different um, ancient indigenous codices. I love using that too, just like the little waves. Yeah, the little waves. That, clouds. Yes. Yeah. I haven't thought about that for a while. Thank you, Maria. Mm. I had not thought about that. So thank you for bringing it <laughs> So uh, we, do have a, we do have a question in the chat and I want to remind yes. everyone that if you do have any questions or need some tips, you can always drop them in here and Maria and I will try to respond as much as we can. Um, and they were wondering how accurate the depiction of the other Los Muertos was in the Disney film Coco. So I don't know if you want to give that one a try. Well, I'm going to just go based on what I read, but um, in terms of See, uh, the Dia de los Muertos, um, for us, it was just going to visit the, the, um, the grave that we're, me growing up personally. I didn't grow up with it as much uh, rooted in like making an altar and that type of stuff um, until I didn't actually participate until I moved here. So um, in terms of how it is in Mexico, I just can just speak from my experience and you just go, um, the, the, the graves are graves, they have the, um, um, God, help, I'm blinking on the word. Um, the tears? No, 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 well, yeah, they have the tears, but they're like um, above ground. So they, you know, so it's you do and you have this whole space for dedicated to that person. Uh, but it's, I never, I was really young when he came over here, so I'm not sure if that's what um, caused the, you know, me not knowing so much about it until I was older and then kind of started reviving it at home. Um, but last year, I did a um, an altar at Orange Coast College with a um, with a woman from Oaxaca, and she really educated me a lot on how it works. And according to her. The way that she described it was very, I mean, resonated a lot with the, the um, with the movie, with how they were showing it. Um, obviously, the uh, the Alebrijes were not part of the, <laughs> the deal, but they. Um, but she did mention a lot about you know the night of and what you know, the festivity, the colors, the um, the significance of you know their. Um, one thing I didn't know is that there's an arch that is made and it's kind of like the entry point. And usually the arch is covered in, uh, in some simpansuchilo, the, the marigolds. And so that was really beautiful. Um, but Gabby, would you like to add more? Yeah, I guess I would say probably, so I would, I also did, I did not grow up uh, observing the other Los Muertos. Uh, I didn't really learn about it until I was an adult actually. Uh, and so my approach to it has been more from like a research sort of perspective and planning the programs here for the Other Los Muertos and talking to people who have participated in it. 
So I would say that like the symbols were probably, I would say pretty accurate in the way that they're connected to Dia de los Muertos. Like we saw the Sempasuchis, right? The marigolds or Flor de Muerto, if we talk about that. Um, obviously the calaveras or the skeletons that are really important to Dia de los Muertos as well. But one thing I do want to point out, and that's something that I've learned from my own work here at the Museum of Latin American Art, is that the observations are both often rooted in regional differences or depending on where you're from in Mexico. So if you talk to somebody who is from Oaxaca, they're gonna celebrate a lot differently than somebody perhaps who is more from like Guanajuato, for example, to just to take two random cities or two random places in Mexico. Um, and I know that people are also very protective of their traditions um, and the way that they celebrate it. And so they're, Therein also comes in the personal, right? Like we're talking about these very specific personal symbols that we're incorporating. So I would say there's no right way to celebrate Dia de los Muertos, but I think there are definitely wrong ways to commemorate and celebrate Dia de los Muertos. I don't know if that clarifies anything. I completely agree with you in terms of being regional because um, Again, I learned so much from this from a woman who was um, who is from Oaxaca. I mean, that's not uh, I'm from Jalisco, and so our, our approach to things is very different. Um, uh, I'm going to get back to this really quickly because I don't know if you can see, but I have added decorative. Um, can you see it there? Closer. Here. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, right there, I've added like this. I created the whole pan all around. I added the little grooves as if I had finger, I mean, uh, the, the folds of the knuckles. Um, this is just me. Uh, again, these are my images right here. I have my eyes. And my key. key to me, rip. Oh, sorry, stretching myself. The key to me is the representation of um, being a uh, being the first in my uh, family to move uh, to go to grad school to um, to achieve different just higher education, I should say, and so being able to keep knowledge and just um, giving being grateful that I was given that opportunity here. Um, and so here's the I guess in my eyeballs and the, the mask right there. And so when you are all done, we're going to cut this out. Actually scratch that we're going to do our our markers first because um yeah it's going to be easier to find out once we do this part now we're going to for this part we're going to flip it over we want to actually do it on the um shiny part with the tin what typically happens is um it it raises and causes a bit of a shadow effect and so it looks a little darker um, um, in the lower areas and makes it easier to read. But since we don't have that here, we're going to create uh, the illusion of shadow with our Sharpie. So um, actually I'll start with, with decorate. I'm going to start just by coloring in my heart, but I'm going to stay in. If you notice your line, it basically has two sides. So what I mean by that is that where it's raised, can you see here? Where it's raised, there's the inside part of your line and then there's the outside part of your line. So I'm gonna go in the inside part of my line and just trace my heart. I have two hearts that I made inside and I'm just gonna color that in. So Maria, why are you using Sharpie as opposed to like a Crayola or a water-based marker? Uh, the other ones will just light off. This is actually permanent and it'll stay on. Um, the other ones will just, um, if you rub it, it'll just, it will dry. Okay. Or you lose some of the pigment. Um, the pigmentation. Okay, so here is the next. So another good reason to wear an apron if you're using permanent markers, you don't want to mark up your nice clothing that you might be working in. Or because it has secret parts all over. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna go in and um, find areas where I want to say, so like for instance, can you see this right here? the decorative, decorative part around my heart, I'm gonna do basically two lines. One line's gonna be, um, sorry, tracing inside my curve and then outside of it. So that, I'll show you what I mean, just a second.
Okay. So you get kind of the see here this way. So the part that's raised is um is in foil, and the part that was lower, per se, is what I've um what I've traced in black. Does that make sense, Gabby? Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're so fast. And now our 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 people at home aren't going to probably be as fast as you are, right? And right. Maybe they'll be a little bit slower, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I've also been done practicing this. doing this for yeah. a long time, haven't you? I said, I've also done this once or twice, so um, we do get a little bit faster. But don't rush. This will be recorded, so you'll have the um, ability to access it. You need to... And one of the things I stress a lot is uh, it, often people get caught up in, oh, it doesn't look like you know this or it doesn't look like that. And it, it's it's yours. And it's, you know, as long as it it comes from you and it has um, there's a fly coming in, okay? um, then as long as it has the, the idea that really is all that matters. So um, you know. Make sure you're having fun when you're doing this. It's part of the, the whole experience. And maybe this is the first time that you do it. Maybe you've never thought of making a milagro out of heavy duty tin foil. And so this is your practice and you can make it a part of your annual Dia de los Muertos tradition. So as you're decorating your ofrenda, or if you just want to create a mini nicho, right? To have somewhere in the house, if you don't have a lot of space for it. Um, this is something you could maybe do again next year. Uh, maybe you can have a whole family of nichos, one representing uh, each individual's hand, right? Yes, and I love that you said this could be, you know, you said a whole family of them. This could be something you do with your whole family. Yeah, I and mean, each of you have your own, you know, that was your own ideas. Um, this is, I love that this is very easy to do for, um, or accessible, and also for um, anyone in the family is accessible to anyone who wants to do it. And, uh, okay, so you don't have to do the, the black around everything but you see how much better that looks like you can actually make out the image um and it pops uh and so you don't have to do the entire thing if you don't want to if you just want to have areas where it's a focal point um like i did here I and mean, this one i just did just the center and then i said uh, this was the amor in the bottom so i was hoping you know for it this is a prayer for prayer i mean for peace and love um or if you wanted to do the whole thing, you can. This is again entirely to you. Piece. So I'm going to do a little bit more um, in just like the images up top, so that you can make them out. But then I'm going to stop there. What are some of the other designs that you've added on there? So, like I said, I did the the heart. I'm sorry, the heart, and then the um, the eyes. In terms of like nipping, just hoping to be able to see all over the world soon. And um, mouse again, because I'm quite social. And I miss just talking to people. And then I have over here the key, in terms of the key of knowledge is also, I think it also contributes to this idea of going places and saying things. It's just you learn a lot about um, cultures and about actually how similar we are as a whole, when you travel and you see the world and you talk to people. And so it's kind of like the key, he acknowledges the idea of being able to open yourself up to learn more, but, the, but also for me, again, it's just being grateful that um, I was given an opportunity by the United States and you know, being able to pursue higher education. And then lastly, ooh, this little, um, lastly over here, it's just honestly, this one is just has a decorative pattern. So I love what you pointed out earlier, right, about whether, or regardless of the diverse places that we might come from and the experiences that we might have, that I think Dia de los Muertos is something that we all can, well, we find that commonality in that we all have had ancestors. We come from somewhere 
and we have people that we can commemorate, right? And that's like a basic human experience that everybody can share. And so when people ask me, then they say like, oh, can I celebrate Dia de los Muertos? Can I commemorate it? Like, I just like to say, well, is there somebody that you miss or that you'd like to honor somebody, even maybe, maybe it's not even from your family, but part of a community that you belong to that you would like to commemorate with this. And I say, and if you are interested in doing that, then by all means, please participate in the different traditions. I love that. Because yes, it is very important. It's also a way to grieve. And grieving is also very important. So we have another question asking yes. if we could uh, restate again, the relationship of the retablo with the ofrenda. Is one a part of the other? Are they two different pieces? And uh, what are their meanings? So I think we kind of touched on that, but, um, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Maria, right? So the retablos um, are traditional sort of like religious niches or little boxes that contain, they can contain petitions or they can contain paintings or symbols or even like little three-dimensional. Do you want to add? Okay, so um, the retablo itself is comes from from the Catholic Church. It's the way that they were, um, again, typically made out of wood and it's decorated, it's painted. There's a saint or some uh, religious, the, so, okay, yes, sorry, uh, religious icon, so it could be uh, Jesus, there's a virgin or one of the saints, and then it's decorated above. And typically, actually, it pulls out, and okay, that's something we're gonna talk about in just a bit, but it is, um, hinged here and then it opens up and then you have the image in here and there's like paintings and other beautiful decorative imagery on the side. Uh, the, and so it's, it's more like a, but it's like a box. And those can and be it, found both at homes and in churches, right? Well, the, so the Nicho is a smaller version of that that people created to have them at home. And those typically have an image in them. Now they've expanded where they have um, it doesn't have, it's not always really just like a, you know, saint or anything in the middle. It sometimes, um, it's sometimes, I've seen them with Frida on there. <laughs> it's somebody who you, who uh, you're dedicating it to. And so we are kind of combining them with the new, it's called a nicho retablo. So it's the idea of the retablo, but it's in a small box. Um, but I'm also blending on top of that, the milagro, which the milagro is obviously the petition. So here, your petition is what's at the center, or your um, what, whoever you're honoring is at the center, your milagro, and then then you can decorate and make it more you see that you're going to make it like more retablo based, which is about this, or you can go and say this is my altar, and now I'm dedicating more things to go with this milagro that I'm petitioning for on the behalf of someone else. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of religious items like milagros, like images of saints um, can also be placed on the ofrenda, right? Because the ofrenda is the place where we all come together to meet with our ancestors. And so there's a representation there of our own spiritual or religious beliefs. And because Dia de los Muertos is the product of a combination of indigenous and Catholic beliefs and imagery, that is why you also find these types of religious symbols, images, and objects on mm -hmm. the ofrenda. Right. Um, okay, so if you are done, um, we are going to now, cut it, uh, sorry, we're gonna glue this to a piece of paper um, because as you can tell, foil is kind of flimsy and we wanna reinforce it. So if you have, um, if you have, um, uh, Cardstock, that's better, but if you don't, a piece of paper and so it will work. It doesn't even have to be white. Or it doesn't even have to be, you could recycle right now. If you have something that you wrote on and you're just like, oh, mm. or if you're like me who has a trillion um, scribble drawings that your daughter decided they weren't the, what she wanted and started new, then you could use one of those. Um, so what you're gonna do is we're gonna actually just put blue on the back of the, so again, we're flipping over our foil, so your drawing goes face down, put the whole side up, and then we're gonna put blue in the back. And I'm just gonna follow the shape of my hand because um, all I want, and I don't, it's okay if I go over, or, I mean, uh, 
past it because what I'm going to do now is just glue it to the piece of paper and then cut it out. So it really doesn't matter okay, how like lined up it is. This is why we, we glue it first so then we can cut it up together. So just a reminder, pounding on your thing is not going to, um, on your project, isn't going to do anything outside of flatten what you've already done. So just, you know, hold it, press it gently so that you can glue it together. Okay. And once that's glued, all you're going to do is turn it over and cut it out. Now, you're going to have a line that you did, that you can see, a visual line from when you, um, so a, really, a raised line from when you traced your hand. Leave that in there. Cut around that line so that you can see where it starts. It's going to be okay if it's a little bit past that. It's going to look really nice if you leave it on there. So I'm going to start by cutting out. Like I said, I'm going to leave that line so that I can see. Do you want to be able to see the black outline when you cut it? Well, this one, I decided to try it out, try something new. And to be honest, I'm not exactly, I mean, for happy with it with like the the decision to trace the whole thing I just wanted to see what it looked like because I actually prefer when it's just the foil and you can see the line above. what I did is I traced the inside part of my trace line and left the outside but now you can't really see the outside so I probably wouldn't do that next time but you know that's what makes it fun right trial and, yeah, trial and, and error and everybody's gonna prefer it of the, a different way and it, it really is up to whatever you think as the maker <laughs> looks best, right? Whatever feels better for you. Okay, so and see, I'm gonna I'm starting to cut like that's why I said it doesn't really matter where you put the glue because we're gonna cut it out. So if it is glued together or not, doesn't really matter. What you wanted to do to make sure that the hand is glued. So we are going to cut. Now again, like Gabby mentioned, or Gabriella mentioned, I am um a little bit faster and I will try to remind myself of that. Um, but again, if you need the and I, like to, I, I want to remind everyone that the reason that a lot of times, you know, your, your workshop instructors can do things so quickly and so well is because they have invested years in learning how to do this. So both Maria and I went to graduate school to learn how to make art. So um, I think we've literally been doing this for, I don't know how long. <laughs> um, and so whenever somebody says, oh, you're so good at doing that. And I said, yes, because I spent literal years in school learning how to cut things and how to make lines and how to fold yeah. things. Yep. And it's nuts to think of how long it's been, but it, it has been a while. Gabby and I, Gabriella, so you will forever be Gabby to me. It's fine. Uh, we met in when she was in grad school and I was an undergrad. And fun fact, thanks to her, I got into printmaking. Oh, in a print shop, right? We met in the yep. print shop. Yep. And she was so good at what she does, what she did, or what she does, that I was like, I want to do that. So here we are. Ah, I missed part of my. Oh, it's a trash can. Um, I missed a little bit in terms of gluing right here, and that's going to be okay. I'm just going to add a little more glue and glue it down. But see, now that you've, um, and you're done, if you're not done yet, or if you are, you're going to see, you're going to notice how much more reinforced the hand is, and it's not so wobbly now that you've backed it up with paper. Okay, so um, at this point, this is going to give, uh, we're going to take a little bit longer here. So it'll give you, uh, give everybody a chance to catch up. If you have your lid and it has, you know, writing like mine does, you can either paint it or get construction paper, cover it. This is just white, but you can get colored construction paper and cover it up so that nobody can see anything. Or you can just take paint and paint it, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, you could, I think you could also just take a piece of board if you don't have um, if you don't have a lid, and uh, and then we'll do teach you how to do it really quick with the hinge thing so you can make it more like a flat, you know, the flat version. But that'll be at the end. So right now we're going to paint, or I'm going to paint, or you can do um, just construction paper. 
I like the maybe it's because of my upbringing with religious, you know, religious upbringing, but celestial blue really just represents like the heavens and um, brings brings joy to me seeing this color. Reminds me of my childhood. And so I, and I also really like it in terms of technically, I like it against oranges and because they are contrasting colors. Now, typically your nichos, your retablos are used in, you use really bright colors. So keep that in mind when you're doing it and also using contrasting bright colors. So if you have, you decide to go with like a bright purple, then maybe you contrast it with really nice yellows and, um, you know, like, hmm, I really like like the, the magenta and maybe an ochre color. It's a really pretty colors together. Here, like I said, I'm doing this blue. Now, I'm not going to take all our time and really cover it. If we were on, if I were just at home, I'd probably give it another coat because I could still see the writing. But in terms of our time here, I'm just going to give it one coat. Because how long one. does it usually take to dry? So people have an idea in their head how long they'll have to wait for it to dry. Well, um, that obviously depends on your paint. Um, acrylic paint does dry faster, but am I using tempera or acrylic here? Debbie, would you be able to tell me what I'm... I think you're using tempera. Acrylic, acrylic paint. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Our wonderful intern Isabella yeah. gathered all the materials for the work. Yes. So typically, um, depending on how thick, obviously, if you, you lay on the paint thick, it's going to take a while to dry. Uh, but usually about, what do you say, 10, 15 minutes for acrylic to dry on one layer? Yeah, it's, it's fast drying. Okay, but... Oh, right. and one tip, right, is that if you put your hand on it and it's still cool to the touch, it means it's still wet, I think, with tempera paint. I think that's something that helps me out. So even if it looks dry and you put your hand on it and it's very cool compared to everything your touch. else, yeah, yeah, it's still a little damp and it might, it might smudge. So that's in this, in this case, with, um, with uh, paint and the heat right now, it's actually a good thing for us because it dries much faster when it's in, when it's hot outside. Um, so if it's for a rainy day, we would wait a longer time to let this dry. But it's not, it's nice and sunny and we're gonna be gonna be quick. Okay, one tip for um, I mean another tip is anytime you put paint on a brush, do not leave it out. Um, because it will just dry and make your brush hard and it will just ruin the crystals and then you can't use that brush anymore. So I'm just going to leave them to stick in water. Typically, you don't want to leave it in there for too long because it also will damage your um, the handle part. But for now, it'll be fine. But while you're doing the project, it's fine just to leave it in the water. Okay. And then, um, so let's see. I'm going to, it's still a little wet, but I can still show you what to do next. That is done. I'm, when that is done, I'm going to glue this. And so while this dries, Actually, you know what, while this dries, let's work on our, um, the decorative, the, the uh, neutral part around our box. We were sent printout, um, printable PDFs on um, a packet, right, Gabby? Gabriella, can you? Yeah, so you should all have uh, received in the packet that you got uh, these designs that actually Maria hand drew herself. So we're really grateful this, that she took the time out this, to design these patterns for us. Or that one. And then there's also a blank one, and that is for you to design your own if you're so inclined to. It's up to you. Um, you're going to choose one or design your own. And if you design your own, a ruler does come in handy to keep things um, pretty symmetrical because they tend to be symmetrical. But if not, then you can choose one of the ones we already have. Um, I'm going to go with the floral print because I can work out. So there's that one. And okay. here in these areas that are empty, these spots right here, these you can add more um, images if you'd like in here. Sometimes you'll see in, you know, really just you'll see a cost or anything like 
then you know religious like halfway up around this is like more like the shrine part of it so you can add in more and lift these open the one, or the other one has one too so that you can add more if you wanted to or you can just do all color which is what i did with mine is just a color um okay so again whatever color you chose to paint in the box make sure you use contrasting colors when you do your um the decorative part of your neutral okay so i'm going to go with maybe magenta and start just by coloring this in now i'm going to be quick again because i've done this once or twice but you don't have to go this fast if you don't like and we have about 15 minutes left for okay. the workshop just giving you a little time update thank you because apparently i can as i mentioned earlier i like to talk Alrighty. And you're always yep. fun to talk to. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy teaching. So um, we want to make sure that um, we color it in because we do have very saturated colors or very full colors, very bright colors. And so, uh, you know, use that elbow grease to get, if you're using more, um, uh, color pencils or crayons, use the elbow grease to really punch in that color. Okay, and then a the little light thing. Oh. And it's okay, most colors you can layer. Here we go. Okay, so for the interest of this piece, to make sure that we can get it done, I'm going to. Is it okay to pretend that I finished? Okay, we're gonna pretend that I did it all. And here's a, a great time for you to just, if you're watching it, re-watching it, just pause and finish this part and then move on. Um, because I wanna make sure that we have time to finish and really, really do it up. Okay, so these card lines, I kind of did opposite here, but you'll understand why. So these card lines are actually your cut lines. I know you typically think of dash lines as your cut um, your cut lines, but that's because this is what you're going to fold. So in this case, your your dash, your um, broken lines are your fold lines. So every single dark line that you see, maybe it's not every single one. This one and this one, you're going to cut that out. Okay. So, and these are your sides. These are for your sides, and the other that one's for the top. Of your niche. All right. So for my littles that are on um, and they're you know doing this with me, just a reminder, friends, scissors. Your um, you see this hole right here? That one is for your thumb, and the other one is for your hands. I know sometimes you forget and you just grab them, and it's much easier for your hands if you hold it this way. Okay. All right. So. We are going to fold at the dotted line. And at that point, you're going to put glue on the blank side, and then you're going to attach it to the side here. So, do that right now. That's my time. We have 10 more minutes. All right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So here's that. Ooh. So I'm applying glue to the blank side, right? And again, when, oh, this is very important. You want to fold it behind. Okay. So not in front. You want to fold it behind because what's going to happen is you're going to glue it on the side. Okay. So that's that. Now I'm going to grab my box and attach it to the side. This is why we said the, um, the size in half of it by 11 because, because of these. But if you have a bigger box, um, you can use these as a reference and just make your own. It's very, very simple to make your own design. Okay, and then lastly, the top, 
And now this one is, um, depending on the size of your box, you may have to trim it a little bit and that's okay um, because, or you can leave it like a big shrine, just cut off the, the bottom part so you don't have, so it doesn't hang off. Let's see, it's gonna be like, you could just do this and next to everything, but you're gonna cut it out around the design. While you're cutting, I'll just inform uh, everyone who's joining us today or who watches this that we will be building a virtual ofrenda here at MOLA this year. So you do have the opportunity to participate. Um, you will just need to send an image of a loved one along with their name, date of birth, and the date of their death as long as a message and your contribution will be included in our virtual altar. And I'll go ahead and drop all that information into the chat. So if you have um, somebody you'd like to honor and you'd like to participate, that would be fantastic. Oh, and everybody who participates will be entered into an opportunity drawing sponsored by uh, Hyundai. So you will be able to perhaps win a prize if you participate in our, our virtual altar. So what I meant by cutting off is this little bit right here, so there's no glue. You can cut that off and just let it hang out. And that I can't turn it over yet because my glue is still wet. I mean, my sorry, my coat is still wet, so I don't want to get it all over everything. So I'm just gonna improv and go this way. But this is what I mean. Is can you see this part right here? Because I cut. Can you see it there? Because I cut this little section. So the, this is glue to my box right here, but this is hanging off until from the front, all you see is the edge. So you'd need to, you would need to do that to both sides. So there you get this And now, I mean, well now once it dries, everything is good. See, as, Gab as Gabriella mentioned, it still feels a little cool and I actually can tell it's still wet because they got it on you. But here is where you would put your milagro in the middle or, you know, top, give yourself room for more um, offerings down here, more friends down here. This is where you have your create, you know, have the, um, that's what I'm looking for. You have the ability to get creative with how you want to display your milagro. And a fun uh, thing also is um, milagros oftentimes have, they're just, a, there's a small little charm. So you could make just a lot of small uh, versions of these where it's just an eye, or it's just a crane hands and then put them all around because they're usually pinned to a piece of wood or something and they're just a, a mass amount of milagros. And you can do that also with your thing. So every single open that you can think about would be made in the same uh, format with the foil and you just uh, glue it all around it as if they were pinned to your wood box. And that would be, um, oh, do we have the flower if you wanted to make that or no? Sure, we have about six minutes. I think you can make a paper flower in six minutes. Okay, so another option is to um, make your own, uh, if you don't have seen fun chiles, um, is the, the marigolds, you can also make it out of tissue paper. And it's a very simple process. Um, here is tissue. It was so nice and cut for me. Thank you. You can do like three or four pieces. Um, and what's going to happen, I'm actually going to cut and make it a little bit smaller just for the size of my box. I'm going to cut this in half. But do you see that it's cut in strips? Same size strip. I'm using four for this. And I'm going to make my flower. Now the size of your flower, you have to consider that it's going to be double. So if you want your flower to be, you know, I might want my flower to be about that big. So I'm going to cut there. Okay. And what I'm going to do here, it's, this is called an accordion fold. And um, you're going to just fold a little bit at a time. So, but all together. And then flip it over, 
fold down, keeping the, the width the same. There we go. Okay. Yeah. An accordion fold is this fold that you similar, like if you were to make a paper fan correctly? Correct. Yes. Okay. Like this. And we have a few, but you have a big one, then you can just throw this in an accordion fold. And then you're going to take um, green pipe cleaner if you have it. Any pipe cleaner will work, but it's preferably green because we're going to pretend that that's our stem. I think that's our stem. So also kind of. When, I, when I've worked from home, if I didn't have pipe cleaner, I've used. Um, thread or um, yarn as well. Good to know. So you, I'm just gonna you know, twist until it pulls it together. And then I'm going to pull, ah, I'm, gonna pull it I'm gonna cut it a little bit, but that's okay. I can still do it from here because I wanna have this kind of um, rough edge, not a straight edge, is I'm just gonna do little triangle cuts along the edge. So I'm cut, basically cutting out triangles. And the great thing about this is it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a flower, it's organic, right? Okay, all right, so other side. Quick tip is if you forget like me, you can always do it this way. Or if you remember before you um, put the pipe cleaner, fold it in half and then you just fold it in half like this and you just do it one time. Okay, here we are. Okay, now we're gonna separate our flower, I mean our tissue and pull towards the middle. Now be very careful here because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you pull too hard, you can tear. So and you don't wanna tear your flower. This is my favorite part because I'm almost, I almost feel like I'm making a flower bloom and so yes. pulling the petals apart. I just, I find it really satisfying when I make my own paper flowers. Okay, so this one is, a depending on how many tissue pieces, I only did four for the sake of time to show you, but depending on how many pieces you put on, that's how much, that's how full your flower is going to be. So I would probably go back and do one with six just because I wanted to, I'd like it more full, but the idea is the same. And then, and also, I would probably do this to give you an idea of sizing for your tissue. <clears throat> Maybe like three, three inches in width by, it's three, by three by six would be good pieces. And then you can just cut those in half. And then again, uh, from there, depending on how much you take off, you can make a smaller flower or a bigger flower. And that can be part of your altar. If you have one that's, you have a box that's further in, you can just put them down, or you can just glue it down to your box. The like or around it. It's really up to you the possibility here. And I think that would conclude our workshop. Thank you, Maria. That was fantastic. Um, I, was, I had forgotten about all of these different types of projects that we can do around there, the Los Muertos. And I think that the using of the foil in order to do like a metal sort of um, cutting project is really fantastic. Um, I hope that everybody really enjoyed uh, Maria's workshop. I want to remind you that we will be building our virtual ofrenda here at MOLA and um, that we hope you'll participate and also that we are organizing a costume contest as well. So this is something that we like to do on site at MOLA during our festival every year, but since this year we can't all get together uh, we're going to do it virtually. So I'm placing all of that into the chat as well. So there's hashtags that you can use via Instagram if you would like to participate. And Maria, we uh, have a request for yes. a website or anywhere that somebody can see your amazing uh, prints and sculptures. Um, well, uh, being a mother of two littles, I kind of uh, took a bit of a hiatus for... Uh, 
couple for a few years and I'm just now coming back. So I don't have a work um, my website up yet, but I do have you can follow me on Instagram. I do um, do painting part like uh, virtual painting classes. Um, so it's Frida Frida Brow painting um, on Instagram, or you can do um, M underscore Guadalupe is my art one. So you can follow that as well. Thank you. So I've dropped Medea's Instagram handles into the chat. There's Frida's Brow Painting. So um, she does do virtual paint parties. We're doing them in person and I think you pivoted really quickly into doing them yeah. virtually. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and then also her, her M Guadalupe, M underscore Guadalupe is her, mm. her um, artist page. And I have had the pleasure of working with Maria as a curator in the past as well. Um, her work is really fantastic and it does, does do a lot to explore sort of um, your Mexican background and issues of, of gender and particularly of performing gender around like, you know, rituals like weddings and things like that. Quinceañeras. Yeah, yeah. quinceañeras. Yes, your quinceañera was in the <laughs> exhibition here at MOLA. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, please keep an eye on our calendar. We will be hosting talks, panels, workshops, and all manner of the Dia de los Muertos related projects um, through November 1st. And we will also conclude with an unveiling of the virtual altar. So we really hope that you will participate with that. I hope that you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We were signing <laughs> off now. Bye. Bye.